My name's Regan. I get ten a day and expenses from a detective bureau run by a guy named Anthony J. Lyon. They call me the Lion's Eye. Jack Webb is Jeff Regan, investigator, as CBS offers you hard-boiled action and mystery and thrilling adventure in tonight's story of the man who lived by the sea. The next time you're out for a drive, pick up Olive Street along about the 700 block. You can't miss it. It's a big building made out of white granite. A cosmopolitan building. Anthony J. Lyon, the guy I work for, rents an office there. International Detective Bureau, Suite 308. A couple of rooms with a connecting wastebasket. The Lion has the only desk in the office and the typewriter that Remington dropped from their catalog back in 1915. I walked in about 11 o'clock last Tuesday morning. The room was loaded with taboo. She was a tall girl with a flock of black hair and a mink coat. The kind you see driving a Nash convertible down Sunset Boulevard on warm Sunday afternoons. No wonder the lion's cigar was out. It was wet on both ends. He had one arm around her shoulders. He knew by this time that coat was the real article. There wasn't any music, but he didn't seem to mind. Come on in, Regan. Not much room to dance. We got business. She's your date. This is Mr. Regan, Miss Cara. How do you do, Mr. Regan? Mr. Lyon tells me you're just the man I want. Well, he said the same thing to a mortician last week. Miss Cara is associated with the famous psychic consultant, Prince Nemo. I help the prince look into people's minds. Well, now that ought to be fun if all your customers are under six. You don't believe in thought transference, Mr. Reed? Do you? Uh, Prince Nemo sent Miss Cara to retain an operator. Why didn't he come himself? Prince Nemo never appears in public. He misses some good ball games. He has television. Yeah. The prince prefers to spend his time in meditation and thought. I handle all of his outside contacts. Regan, I want you to drive out to Prince Nemo's home in Ocean Town with Miss Cara and speak to the prince. What kind of a retainer did he send you? We don't discuss finances in front of clients. Oh, this is another blind spot. You don't know what this guy wants. He said it's a very delicate matter, and he wants to explain it to you himself. Oh, sure. She waltzed in here with a check, and you'd sell your grandmother to a glue factory for two bucks. Is there yeah. any way I can reassure you, Mr. Regan? Buy me a battleship. You got a license and a contract with International. You want to tell me about it, lady? Prince Nemo was very excited this morning. He called me in and told me to make the arrangements. It's not enough script. He never tells me anything. I just work for him. Will you please? Yeah, all right. Here's a nickel. Call me and tell me what's up. Suppose I can't. Then you got something for your piggy bag. <laughs> the lion stood there and watched us leave. He looked happy, like a hobo in a bubble bath. Well, we went downstairs. We climbed into her convertible. The guy in the parking lot had to take a walk around the block when she flashed him a smile. I asked her about lunch. She said no. I asked her about dinner. She said something that meant no. It's like that sometimes. The flag's up, the meter's ticking, and you get nowhere. But from a couple of things she told me, I got the idea that she was doing more than help the prince read minds. His place turned out to be a good hour from Los Angeles up 101. A couple of stories of glass and concrete leaning out over the ocean. Inside, a guy on a white turban and some pants that looked like oversized diapers put his hand on a big curved knife he had in his belt. He was wearing tennis shoes. Right this way, Mr. Regan. Uh, butcher? That's Gini, the prince's manservant. He's from India. I bet the Indians were glad to get rid of him. Gini's harmless, tongueless. And he doesn't hear. I like you, Mr. Regan. And this is the prince's study. Come in. Oh, come in. This is Mr. Regan. Of course. Welcome, sir. Welcome. The lion's eye. I'm honored, sir. Please sit down. That'll be all, Lena? Of course. I'll be in my office. Charming girl, Lena. She handled all your outside contacts? Except for those matters I must attend to personally. Mr. Regan, I'm in trouble. It's paid for. I want you to save my life. We'll look healthy. I am healthy, let me assure you. 
but my life has been threatened. They got police departments. I thought you understood. This is a delicate matter. We aren't here to discuss me. Who's the guy? It's a lady, Mr. Regan. A very beautiful and lovely creature. And she'd like nothing better than to see my carcass go out with the tide. How do you know? She's erratic, ill-tempered, and ruthless. Any more? Yeah, she called me this morning and told me what she intended to do. You got a chance to reach for your gun. To reach for you, Mr. Regan. Now, I feel the entire matter could be settled amicably if you were to call on her, inform her you are my personal bodyguard and that you are here to protect my life. What makes you figure she'd go for that? It's worth a try. And besides, I'm paying. Mm -hmm. Now tell me how long you've been blackmailing her. Blackmail? What do you mean? Oh, your racket might last six months, a year, but not long enough to build a place like this. The answer's blackmail. My dear fellow, I... Okay, okay, so I should have told you. Give it to me. Well, I can slip them into a trance, a spill a family secret or two. What kind of secret? Any kind. They want their minds read. I read them 25 bucks a hit. Where does the shakedown come in? When I tell them what they told me. You've been putting a squeeze on her? She's an actress. She was in on a deal at the studios. And she won't shake. She said she'd blow my head off. Look, I'm in a spot, Regan. She's the kind who'd do it and make love to the jury. Give me a name. Doris Patrick. Ever heard of her? Where'd she live? Palisades. Here's her address. All right. You going over to talk to her now? Well, she isn't gunning for me. Oh, thanks a lot, Regan. You know, I've been sweating. It's real good for a cold. Yeah, I'll try and catch one. You guys yell real loud when they answer back. I'm just thinking of my future, Regan. I won't look good dead. <laughs> I left him sitting there scratching his bald head under his turban. He looked unhappy like somebody fed him a Vaseline sandwich. Well, I climbed in my car and I followed the highway to the turnoff back to Sunset. The Malibu fog was coming in for the winter and by the time I got to the address Nemo had given me, I was looking around for my hands. Doris Patrick's place was too big for a marble game and too small for football. There was a wire fence all around it and a sign every 15 or 20 feet or so that said not to trespass. I parked in the boulevard and walked up the driveway. It was about then that a guy in a blue suit showed up. He was tall and heavy, and he thought a lot of his hat. He pulled down on the brim, blew smoke in my face, and kind of nudged me with his shoulder. Well, Vaughn Pilgrim, we don't want any. How do you know? We're waiting for the 49s. Scram, huh? You aren't even on the list. All right, we'll wait for the 50s. Blow. I came to see Doris Patrick. Yeah, what for? You her? <laughs> sure. What do you want? Business. Shop closed. You always like this, or you miss lunch today? Look, I don't know who you are, Pilgrim, but you don't understand English. Well, I know you. There's something about a guy in a lineup. Yeah? He memorizes easy. Cop? Private. Private a city, you all smell the same to me. Hunting season's over. You always carry a 38, do you? Oh, that's showing? Well, maybe you got a broken rib. <laughs> well, I met all kinds of funny guys. I said I wanted to see her. Ain't in. Watchdog? Now you're getting smart. Well, you aren't. What kind of crack is that? Just this. I'm going in. Trick I learned a long time ago. You shoot a guy in the knee and he don't ever walk straight again. Ever done it, punk? Oh, sure. That's how I learned. Mm -hmm. <coughs> That's when I learned, baby. He slumped against the side of the wall and he looked tired like he'd been running from Compton. Well, I left him there and I went up the driveway to the porch. Coming around a blind corner, I bumped into something that kind of relaxed and rolled into me. It was a blonde girl, about 25, in a white polo coat. Well, I was willing to try it again, but she began talking with a voice that was deep enough to go in the oil business. Uh, mm. uh, I thought you might be running interference, but you look like the whole team. Whose side are you on, lady? I keep score. Doris Patrick? You're on the right field. Where's the locker room? Maybe I like you. Where do you come from? Right here. Didn't know we raised your kind anymore. Or did you grow wild? Do I pass? What'd you say your name was? Regan. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Which highway? Straight ahead. To the den. Nice place you got. When's harvest time? I said welcome. That isn't what the tall boy said. Tall boy? A blue suit with a thirty-eight and a hat. <laughs> That'd be Jesse. I was married to him once. What about now? Oh, he hangs around like that sometimes. I never see much of him. Trouble? No, not much. You got a lot of size, mister. Must have been good. Do that kind of thing often? Only when 
when I have to. Sit down. How do you like it? Hmm? Soda or uh, water? Your way. There now. Isn't that better? I don't know. This is my first drink. You'll get another. It's a cold day. Not in here. You're quick. Must have a good straight man. His name's Prince Nemo. Must we talk about him? He thinks you're dangerous stuff. What do you think? Right now or when I'm a couple of feet away? Now. Hey, now look. Remember me? I just got here. Your name's Regan and we're going to get along. Yeah. It's in the cards. You've got a fast deck. Go ahead. Deal. All right. Hmm. How much time between rounds? Yes. Who? Oh, just a minute. You know somebody named Lion? Yeah. He has quite a roar. Here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who's the name who has the phone? Nemo's friend. Sounds like he's a friend of yours. All right, you got something to say? It's all off. Check bounce? It was certified. Nemo called ten minutes ago and canceled a contract. Well, what happens now? You're finished. Come back to orbit. Who told you I was here? The prince. It was a quick change. We got paid. Well, I already started something. I don't care what you started. You finish it on your own time and expense sheet. Yeah. Bad news? Well, I'm through working for the day. Well, I was an old friend of the family when I left. She didn't want me to go, but I was thinking about Prince Nemo and uh, the way that nothing made sense. Oh, the whole thing looked phony, like an undertaker in a white derby. It didn't take 20-20 vision to see that somebody was getting anxious to make a play. Now, by the time I got home, I figured I was out of it. But my company had other ideas. It was Jesse, and he had friends. You should lock your door, Regan. Why? You'd crawl under. All right, fellas. Friends? Yeah, I just hired them. You got a parade permit? Stan, say hello to Regan. Hello, stupid. What about Skinny? Hiya, Grogan. Name's Regan. He's a detective. Isn't that right? <laughs> You're pretty good with your women, Regan. You know, you look lonesome, Jesse. You got something to say? Stay away from it. You're shaking. You want a drink? Already had one. Stand, Skinny. Set him on a bed. Let me go. Oh, Regan, once more. Once more. Stay away from it. You said that before. I want to make sure you understand. Stand, Skinny. Hold his arms. <laughs> I've said all the right words. Maybe my punctuation's bad, huh? Lay off. Period. Lay off. Period. Lay off. Period. <laughs> okay. Okay, leave him on the bed. Hey, he rolled off. Oh, that's fine. Fine. <laughs> now he won't have to change his sheets. Oh, Jesse was good. When I got up, my face looked like a relief map of Pasadena. He was wearing a signet ring. He left out some of the boulevards, but the Rose Bowl was right out in front. I found a drink in the cabinet, and I started for the mirror to see what was left. It was about then I heard a knock on the door. He was a little guy in a cab driver's suit. It figured that he got the job because they ran out of big uniforms. They double-crossed him on that cab. If it wasn't for his ears, he'd have been wearing his snood. Hiya. Yeah? Football? What do you want? Your name, Regan. That's what it says on the mailbox. I met a friend of yours today. Get to the point, will you? A dame named Lena Cara. Yeah, Lena Cara. Some dish. All right, you're in the register. Wait, wait, that ain't all. She wants to see you. What about? Didn't say. Just said to see if you was home. You home? Yeah. I got her down in my cab. We'll send her up. I don't think she can make it. What do you mean? She looks kind of funny. Maybe you better come down. She was sitting on the edge of the seat, staring out at nothing. Her back was as stiff as a filing cabinet, and there was a little ring of white around her lips. I paid off the cabbie, and I took her back up to my place without a word. When we closed the door, she was sitting on my sofa the same way. Only this time, she had a twenty-five automatic in her hand. Well... Well? Where'd you get the gun, lady? Gun? Oh, this? I bought it for $30. Can I see it? Oh, yes, Mr. Egan. I brought it so I could show it to you. Uh-huh. I paid $30 for it. I paid $30 for 
Scalp. It's brand new, isn't it? Oh, yes, of course. Did you know Prince Nemo was my husband? Since when? Long time now. Not many people know that. Did you come here to tell me that? No. No, I came to tell you that you don't have to worry anymore. About what? About what my husband hired you for. Well, I've already been called off. Oh. Oh, I didn't know that. Did you meet Doris Patrick? Yeah. Then it was about her. What do you want, lady? Nothing. Nothing at all. Just that we... We we don't have to worry anymore, do we? Tell me about the gun. Doris is very pretty, don't you think? I've seen her on the screen many times. I think she's quite pretty. I could hardly blame the prince at all. I could hardly... Why'd you bring the gun? I imagine the air would be cleaner there, don't you? What are you talking about? Really very humane, they tell me. Come on, stop it. It's just like sitting down and never waking up. I read all about it. Just walk in and sit down. If you don't try to hold your breath... Stop it, sis, stop it. Now listen to me. What is it? What have you done? What are you trying to say? Don't try to hold your breath. You go right to sleep, don't you? You're trying to tell me that you killed him? They they don't make such a great deal of noise, do they? He's been sitting there in his house by the sea. He looked very much alive. Only... 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 He isn't alive at all! (laughs) Tell me, Mr. Reagan, tell me! Do I make a good murder? Do I? Do I? Well, after she got through screaming, she settled down to a slow, even kind of giggle that started somewhere around her shoelaces and didn't get past her knees. It gave me a feeling like somebody was unwrapping an atomic bomb under a Christmas tree. Well... She wasn't going to do any more talking, so I went downstairs and brought back a doctor friend of mine named Sammy Wing. He had his little black bag with him, and he gave her a shot of something. She wilted like last night's orchid and went to sleep. Sammy wrote down a couple of things, and then he looked up at me. Some playmate. Wish I'd have been here for the party. How is she, Sam? You know her better than me. Oh, is she going to be all right? Mm, In four or five hours, she'll wake up and want some water. And then what? She might ask you what happened, or it... Might start all over again. By the way, what was it? I don't know. She came over to see me. I should have visitors like this. I've been working too hard. She said she killed a guy who was a client of mine. Maybe I'm lucky at that. Why the past tense? The lion called me off the case. Official, huh? Yeah. You've got nobody to protect. Where's the corpse? At a house in Ocean Town. Here. Call the police. And you and me can go out and do our Christmas shopping. Oh, she said she used this gun. A twenty-five it killed people. No, Sammy, there's a bullet jammed in the chamber. James, don't know how to reload. It hasn't been fired. Ballistics got better ways of telling. She's pretty and she's nice, and I'll bet she looks like a million bucks in a bathing suit. But if I'd have met her within the last three hours, I'd have run for help. Is that professional? Acute hysteria. The kind that pops off guns and people and does a lot of things they can't remember later on. Call Sanducci. Look, it doesn't figure she'd do it with this. Maybe she had another one. While you're at it, call the coroner. Tell him to go out there with some DOA forms. No, I'm going first. Corpse hunt? Just an idea. La Brucherie had an idea. Yeah. This dame's bipped somebody, and she's told you her story. Well, I don't like it. What do they do when a private eye messes up an open and shut murder piece? Sammy, stay with her, will you? There's some bourbon out in the kitchen. Uh, maybe both of us will get our pictures in the papers. I left him sitting there. He looked sad, like a water buffalo caught in a drought. I pushed through the fog for about 40 minutes, and I pulled up in front of Nemo's place in Ocean Town about 9.30. It was dark enough to give a ghost the creeps. I used that ring of keys that I'd taken from her purse, and I went inside. It smelled dry and still, like somebody was waiting for the world to fall apart. I clicked on my flash, and I walked down the long hall to his office. He was there, just like she said. There were three holes in the front of his shirt, close range, but it wasn't the laundry's fault. He'd been dead maybe two hours. The desk drawer showed some canceled checks made out to Doris Patrick. While I was thinking that over, I spotted a thirty-eight Smith & Wesson on the floor by his hand. Lena had been carrying a twenty-five. 
I broke it, and three cartridges fell out. From the looks of the holes in his chest, the thirty-eight was the gun for the job. Well, that made her story and the twenty-five a fairy tale. While I was kneeling there, a light went on behind me. A fat man wearing a sheriff's star was standing by the switch. A tall leather jacket with a flashlight in his hand was in front of me. I began to feel helpless, like a trombone player with a short arm. Scavenger hunt, son. You don't talk, Charlie. There ain't much for him to say, is there, Cap? Yes, not. Well, son. You're going to be calling me names. What do you like best? Killer, murderer, slayer? Papers use slayer a lot. I don't like any of them. Kind of breezy for a hot boy, ain't you? Uh, you mind giving me a name? Regan. I'm with the International Detective Bureau. It's Regan, Cap. He's with the International Detective Bureau. Got a card or something, son? Yeah. Here. Oh. This guy here, a friend of yours? My client, once. What'd you do for him? Okay, tell me this. Why'd you plug him? There's another story. Any good? Better than the one you got. You'll have a hard time selling it. It's a fix. Oh, why you want to say a thing like that? How long you been on the force? Easy, Regan. Me and Cap's being nice. Phone call a little while ago. Funny kind of voice. Said we'd find a stiff here. We didn't say we'd find you. Yeah, you're extra. The dame who worked for him told me. You'd tell homicide? No. That was a mistake. Where's this girl now? Name? Charlie. Call a coroner. Ocean Town is just a small place. Only me and Charlie around. We borrow from the county when we get something like this. Well, I can find you a real answer in an hour. <sighs> you got ideas? Lots of them. You can tell me all about them later. We got a corpse, we got a suspect. You know that's good. Even a weapon. I'll have an alibi when you check the time of death. We'll worry about that later on. All right, son, let's go. Well, I had about as much chance as an elephant in a tea room if those two locked me and booked me. I leaned back into his gun, spun around, knocked his wrist down. He pulled the trigger. But I'd already hit the light switch, and he was making rockets in the dark. I left my car there and cut across the highway and doubled back up the hill. They spread out in the wrong direction. An hour later, I was standing in front of the lion's door. He was wrapped in a bathrobe big enough to keep all the silkworms working overtime. What do you want, Regan? Information. You've been drinking? I've been working. That Lena Karras here? You sent her. She called me and said she wanted to hire you for something else. After Nemo canceled the contract. Yeah, why? You gave her my address. I thought you ought to talk to her. What she want? She told me that she killed the prince. She can't do that. We got a contract. Well, it's already been done. We're in a spot. Yeah, I figured that'd get through to you. They'll be asking me all kinds of questions. Well, why didn't you think of that before you signed? What are we going to do? You're going to find out where this twenty-five came from and if anybody fired it. Huh? She was carrying it when she came to me. I don't want to get in far. Well, you're in it up to your ears. I went out there and found the prince. Only a thirty-eight might have done the job. Yeah? Well, that cleans her up. Not yet. The Ocean Town Sheriff and a guy named Charlie are looking for me. Before? They think I know something. Do you? Not yet. There was a tip-off. Somebody was supposed to be a patsy. Where's Kara now? My place with Sammy Wing. I'm going to get a lawyer. It'll look good. All right, give me the keys to your car. Why? I got a date. Find out who fogged Nemo and we won the championship. Well, you'll have to give the cup back. You cheated. I drove back out to Doris Patrick's place in the Palisades and I rang the bell and waited. It took her a while, but she showed. She was wearing a filmy kind of a thing that made a spider's web look like canvas. I began to feel warm, like a sun lamp on a picture set. We had a date at nine o'clock. I broke my watch. Come in, I'll see if I can fix it. I'm great with a Swiss movement. Yeah, it shows. We were going to look at the stars together. How long you been here? Well, I gave you up at ten. Tell me, how do you like my new dress? It's the right color, but the wrong cut for a funeral. I haven't read the obituaries today. No, it'll be in tomorrow's paper. Have a drink and let's wait for tomorrow. Your friend Nemo was killed tonight. He was no friend of mine. I told you that. So did he. Did he fall off his house? Murder. We've been having fun up to now. You know, you'll be first guess. I don't think I like that. He tried to blackmail you. Hmm. The story's backwards. Well, that's the way it comes out. Mm, not quite. You got another way? He never tried to blackmail me. Mm-hmm. I blackmailed him. How? By 
went to him one day and put him in a trance. Only I used scotch. I found out what he was doing and how he was doing it, so I turned the tables. It was good, clean fun, but expensive for him. Well, now, if he was your meal ticket, then you have an alibi, huh? There'd be cancel checks somewhere. Right where I could find them. I'm telling you the truth. Where does Jesse fit? Oh, I told you we were married once. He's jealous. Did he know about Nemo? Maybe. He was watchdog when I came out. I told you... Jesse. Hello, gorgeous. I still have a key. What do you want? You. Get out. <laughs> you still trapping with this trap? Just in time, Jesse. You know, you didn't listen good. I told you to lay off. Where's your friend? Paid off. I'm handling this alone. We've been finished for a long time. <laughs> We're starting up again, Angel. Or didn't you know Nemo was dead? I saw your 38 tonight, Jesse. Ah, you're wrong. It's her 38. It's got her prints on it. What do you mean? I put him there. And you're going to be tagged for his murder, Angel. <laughs> you see, you're sort of in a spot. Freaking... Easy, baby. This punk never did anything right. Oh? Tell me how wrong I've been. All right. That tip the Ocean Town cops was wrong. Killing Nemo was wrong. Ah, you twisted, Pilgrim. Cops got a warrant out for you right now. Yeah, I heard it on the car radio. Murder suspect. <laughs> Plugging you is something they'll thank me for. With her prints on the gun? Well, how was I to know? I just see you and plug you. Everybody will be sorry, but it'll be manslaughter and suspended. It's pretty right, isn't it? Well, what about me? A friend of mine shoving off at Pedro tonight, Angel. Going all over the world. We'd be together. Well, Angel, do I plug him and meet you somewhere in two weeks, huh? Uh, all right. Move over, Regan. The lady's making up her mind. Now, where do you like? Oh, it was a real photo finish. Just as Jesse set the gun up against my head, Doris pulled a gun from the desk drawer and threw a couple of fast ones into him. Jesse tried for her. I'd call it a dead heat, but she'd have to give Doris the edge. Her first slug cut him down like a blade of grass, but she didn't give up. Angel! Angel! Well, he's all used up. I never shot anyone before. You look like a professional. Give me the gun. I, uh, he deserved to die. Didn't he? Didn't he? I don't know, lady. You knew him better. <laughs> Well, it all unwound like red thread in a Levi factory. Nemo told me his phony story so he'd have a good self-defense angle when he finally got around to killing Doris Patrick some afternoon. Jesse worked for him to keep me out, but I bounced him and got inside. When Jesse phoned Nemo about it, Nemo called the lion and had me jerk before we could compare notes. I guess Jesse went kind of crazy when he saw how well we got along. He got an idea and killed Nemo and made Doris a patsy with those fingerprints. Lena Kara? Well, she went kind of crazy, too. She found Nemo dead and got the idea she did it. It took three doctors a couple of days to tell her what really happened. And the lion was mad when he found out there wasn't any money in it. But then when he saw Doris Patrick's picture in the paper, he got kind of curious. He asked just one question. What did I do... All that afternoon, I was out in her house. Well, I didn't even bother to answer him. Jack Webb is featured as Jeff Regan with Herb Butterfield as Anthony J. Lyon. The story of the man who lived by the sea returned tonight by special request and was written by E. Jack Newman, produced by Sterling Tracy. In tonight's cast, the role of Doris Patrick was played by Yvonne Patey. Also heard, Sidney Miller, Peggy Weber, Paul Fries, Marvin Miller, and Barry Kroger. Music for this program is by Milton Charles. This is Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Oh.